today I'm going to show you exactly how much cash flow option traders can make. I'm going to do this by sharing with you how much we pocketed last month from selling put and covered call options as well as collecting a little bit in dividends. I will also talk through two of my favorite trades we did last month in February and give you an update on our leap option position in Disney. This will show you how you can use options to generate awesome cash flow and returns every month in your account. Hello everyone and welcome back to My Life of Learning. My name is Randy Perez. Please know that I am not a financial advisor and this video is not meant to be investment advice of any sort. I am, however, a 22 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. Before we get started, I just ask one thing of you. Please hit the like button to support this channel. I'm about to give you some really awesome information that I know you're going to get great benefit from. So if you appreciate the kind of information I provide on this channel, please support it by hitting the like button. Thank you for that. Let's get started. Here you see a list of every option trade we did last month in February. The red boxes are the trades we're going to talk about in this video. We will discuss a naked short put option trade that we did in the insurance company Cincinnati Financial, as well as a covered call trade that we did in WP Carry. Then I will give you an update on our Disney Leap or Poor Man's Covered Call position. If you've been watching this trade for a while, then you know that I've been talking about rolling our short call option strike price up. Well, we made our first trade doing that and I'll show you how we did it for absolutely no cash out of our pocket. At the bottom of the blue box, you see that as a result of selling options, we pocketed $12,752. In the orange box, you see that trading commissions cost us $65.02. In the green box at the bottom left, you see we pocketed $70.35 in dividends from Realty Income ticker symbol O. In all, we pocketed $12,757 from selling put and call options as well as collecting a little bit of a dividend there. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 27.7% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. If you calculate the return on the $82,845 margin requirement, it equates to a 201% annualized return on margin. The first trade I want to talk through is in Cincinnati Financial, ticker symbol CINF. Cincinnati Financial is an insurance company. As you can see here on February 5th, we sold to open the March $85 strike put option and we're paid $3.60 per share. I want to mention to you a couple of reasons why we did this trade. Well, now what I'm about to give you is the kind of information I share with my patrons when we do a trade. First, on the left here, on the left chart, the daily chart, notice that Cincinnati Financial have been making higher highs and higher lows over the previous several months. Around the first of the year, it finally broke out above both the green 50 and red 200 moving averages. Its stock price increased all the way up to $95 per share, and now it has retraced back down to that green 50 moving average. If you watch my channel, you know that I always like to get confirmation from multiple time frames before making a trade. So let's look over the weekly chart on the right to see if that chart confirmed that it was a good time to enter a bullish trade in options in Cincinnati Financial. Notice that again, up top, Cincinnati Financial had broke out above both the green 50 and red 200 moving averages. They were now serving as support for the stock. Down in the volume section, you see that there had been nice buying pressure over the previous couple months. Well, what happened? Cincinnati Financial performed exactly as we expected. Over the next two and a half weeks, Cincinnati Financial advanced from around $85 per share up to right at $100 per share. As you can see on February 23rd, we bought that put option back for 40 cents per share. Now I really did not have any good technical reason for closing this position out on the 23rd. The technicals were still actually looking pretty good, but my gut trading instinct honed over years of trading options told me that since this position had run pretty far pretty fast and we had made the majority of our money already, that it was time to close this position out. That gut instinct turned out to be right as Cincinnati Financial pretty much went sideways over the next couple days. So we bought this position to close it out and used that capital that we had set aside for it to enter into a brand new position. In all, we're in this position for 18 days. We pocketed a net of $3.20 per share. If you annualize that return, it equates to a 76.3% non-leveraged annualized return. If you're curious about what the annualized return on margin was, it equates to a 717% annualized return on margin for this trade. Selling put options is my absolute favorite way to trade options. And this is the perfect example of the kind of returns an option trader can make by selling put options. No, not every trade is going to be this good, but by educating yourself on how options work, you can achieve phenomenal returns and put cash into your pocket every single month. A nice tip you can pick up from this trade is that if you sold an option and it loses almost all of its time value or extrinsic value in a relatively short period of time, it's usually best to go ahead and close that position out. You can always find a new position to put that capital right back to work in. 
The two reasons for that are, number one, the position could always come back down and move against you, so you'd lose whatever profit you would have made if you'd closed it out early. And number two, you're able to put that capital right back to work faster instead of letting it sit out there until expiration day at a lower return. Closing nearly worthless option positions early will greatly increase your overall return. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, then I would love it if you just give this video a like. Just bump the like button and thank you very much for doing that. The second trade I want to share with you from last month shows the power of selling covered call options and stocks that have either been assigned to you because of puts you were selling or because you bought shares outright. Here are the details of this position and the trade that we did. Here you see the covered call position we own in WP Carry, ticker symbol WPC. At the large blue rectangle, you see that on January 14th, we were assigned 300 shares of WPC at $70 per share. Before that, we've been selling put options and collected quite a bit of premium from those put options. Finally, on January 14th, those shares were assigned to us, as you can see here. If you look at the red box just below that, you see that on that same day, January 14th, we turned this into a covered call position by selling the February $70 call options and received 70 cents per share. Then last month on February 17th, we bought this February call options back, as you can see on the far right in the red rectangle, for 17 cents per share, and simultaneously sold the March 19th same strike price, $70 call options, for $1.27 per share. If we had stayed short that March call option all the way until expiration, that covered call will pay us a 22.1% annualized non-leveraged cash on cash return. That's not bad for a stock that, as you can see on the weekly chart, has pretty much gone sideways over the past four years. And that 22.1% return, it doesn't even include the 6% dividend yield that we should receive, as you can see here, if the stock is not called away from us before the ex-dividend date of March 30th. So as a result of combining my two favorite strategies, selling put options, and then once the stock is put into our account, selling covered call options, you can see that if you follow the orange arrow all the way over to the bottom right corner, that our cost basis in WP Carry is $57.69 per share. That's an 18% discount off the approximate $70 per share that it's currently trading at. I wanted to share this position with you because it's a nice reminder of the return you can get when you trade in a solid, stable, what some people may even consider a boring dividend paying company like WPC. The final trading position I want to share with you is one of the most exciting positions we've been in over the past year. It's our leap option position, or as it's also known, poor man's covered call in Disney. I'm excited to update you on this position and share with you how you can use leap options along with some creativity as you're going to see to generate awesome returns. Here you see our current leap option position in Disney. If you watched the monthly video from last month, you see that we've added a new leg to this position. I'm about to show you why. To briefly recap, up top, you see that we own the January 2023 110 leap call option. Back when we first entered this position about a year ago, we sold to open the January 2022 150 call option. Since that time, we've been selling an additional short-term naked call option against this position. If you've been following this trade with me, you know this position, it was cooperating quite nicely with us until where you see the lower yellow arrow in November of last year when Disney decided to gap up. And then about a month later, at the next higher yellow arrow, is that it decided that first gap was so much fun, it was going to do it again. Since that time, as you can see by the orange arrow, Disney has been reaching higher highs and higher lows. The result is that both our short call options have gone pretty deep in the money. As I mentioned in last month's video, I wanted to begin rolling this short call option up in hopes that eventually we'd be able to let it expire worthless. So how can we do that without coming out of pocket? Here you see what we did. These are the three trades we did simultaneously on February 26th. At the top red box, you see that we bought to close the March 19th 145 call option. That cost us $44.69 per share. In the blue box below that, so that we rolled that short strike price up by $5 by selling the April 16th 150 call option. For that, we were paid $40.82. At this point, we're out of pocket $3.87 per share. Now, we don't want that because as remember, as option traders, we have special abilities. So we used our knowledge of selling put options to sell that same expiration day, April 16th 175 strike put option and received $4.87 per share. The result is, as you can see at the very bottom right corner, we pocketed a $100 bill and rolled the short call option up by $5. So this is our plan to try and work our way out of this second naked short call option. We'll continue selling put options to give us the cash flow to roll the short nearer term call option up until it either expires worthless or we can buy it back for next to nothing. If you'd like to see more details on this trade and an explanation of why we sold that 175 put option in Disney, check out the video in the link above and description below entitled, When Should You Sell Put Options? 
Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.